cam back. But also, the computer is kind of laggy right now. <laughs> we're, we're, we're still building. I'm just hanging out here. Still building. Uh, someday, someday it'll be done. What to do, what to do. So it seems like, um, there's potentially some stuff with transactions that we could do, but it's a, it's a kind of nuanced. It's not quite as powerful as the, like, transactions in a, in a relational database. But that's, that's fine. Um, Somewhere, I have a browser. There we go. Uh, okay, so I think we're done with the Redis docs for now. We got our, our pull request. So make the task worker skip over tasks that aren't ready to be run yet. That, that's the thing that uh, we have been working on. It should be done. I guess we can uh, we can go look at the the YouTube. Uh, Upload API service. Let's see what we can do there. So, not a lot to it. Um, so here's the upload video handler. I say there's not a lot to it. So there's a good number of lines of code here. Uh, could be maybe uh, simplified or pulled out into into sub functions or, or something but uh, yeah so here's the part where we actually make the request though right to initiate the upload process it's where we're sending all this metadata and we're telling it how big the, the final upload is going to be um, and we check to see if we get a response um, this, this error handling is for if there's like a, a network error or something like that. Uh, and then it's down here that we handle, uh, if it's not a success, right? If it's, if it's not like a 200 or 299, then currently we have the, the upload video handler return a 500 error. Um, and we have some tracing here and all that. Um, and then there's some stuff we do later, right? This is not the actual upload. This is like creating the um, the, the placeholder for where we're gonna upload the actual contents. But I think that this is likely to be where we're gonna get the quota error. I mean, there's something to be said for um, we also have this upload function and the upload function is where we have like retries and, and various things, success, temporary failure, permanent failure. So what is a temporary failure here? So we look at upload enter. I'm just wondering if we need to worry about looking for these, um, API quota errors in here or or not. Okay, so we say specifically if it's a 500, a 502, 503, 504, then it's a temporary failure. Otherwise it's a permanent failure. Just kind of thinking here about what I want to do with that. Um, it's kind of a
I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen a case where we've like created the slot for the video and then the video upload doesn't go through. So I don't think that that's really, I don't think that's that's gonna be a problem where we'll get a quota error inside of the, the actual proper upload. It's gonna be when we are trying to the doing that initial request. Let's get that outliner back. Let's see what's going on here. And all sorts of things in here. Um, okay, let's hide all that, hide all that. So there's a couple of things where we probably need to handle. Um, in fact, that's probably a good place to start is just like noting where we need to handle um, this quota error. Right. So in the uh, place where we're adding a video to a playlist. Hmm, well, that's interesting because that, that's being called by Upload Video Handler, right? So... The issue with this... <laughs> right. So here's the problem. The problem is, is if we fail the task because this fails, then we're in a situation where, what are we gonna do, re-upload the whole video just to add it to the playlist? That doesn't make any sense. This is, um, this this demonstrates a use case. This, this is what I was thinking about before. I, I convinced myself that it was good enough <laughs> to end the video upload handler in this task to also add the video to the playlist um, because, uh, well, it should, it, you just do it all together, right? But the issue is, is that if the video succeeds in uploading, but then we run out of API quota to add the video to the playlist, well, we don't wanna re-upload the video again. So this really needs to be a separate task. So that task can be requeued once we have API quota again. Um, and that was where there's a thing on the backlog, right? To have the ability to chain tasks. It's like you complete one task and then it starts up another one, um, specifically for this kind of thing. So I think for right now, we can't really, uh, can't really do handling quota errors here. We're just going to treat it as any kind of error and it's going to fail um, the task. So it's going to show up as a failure so that I know something went wrong and I can investigate it. I think what I'll do is in the backlog, if there's not already something like this, if there's something about the playlist. Uh, oh, that, nope. That's not the search field. This is the search field. Playlist. Uh, task. Task can have additional follow on task. I think I was listing use cases here. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna have some a list of use cases for this. Uh, update record. Um, to show that it was published once the video is uploaded. Um, add video to playlist as a separate task so that if it fails due to quota, it can be restarted later. All right, it's, it's nice to kind of accumulate what, multiple reasons why uh, a feature, maybe a more complicated feature, <laughs> you want it just uh, so you remember later and you're not forgetting, oh, well, well, also this case and in this case, in this case, uh, even if it, even if all those things don't actually get so like there might be additional work to solve each individual thing, um, keeping in mind kind of all the problems you're trying to solve um, is good.
Even if you can't solve them all, you can at least be aware that they're still there. Um, as long as it doesn't stop you from <laughs> from uh, making progress, right? You just gotta acknowledge that sometimes you can't you can't solve all the problems, and maybe um, like I thought that was the case before. That oh no, I don't actually need the the follow on task feature to solve this problem, and I. I attempted a solution, and there were some problems with it, and well, it'll be better uh, at some point. Anyway, so I think really the only place in here that is going to make sense to check for this quota error is in um, the place where we're making this first request. Um, which is not to say this is the only place because again I believe because I have seen videos uploaded and then they did not they were not associated to the playlist and I'm assuming what's happening is that those API calls are failing because of quota um, but there's nothing I can really do about that right now without implementing that other feature for follow one tasks so for now we're just gonna have um, a to-do did we uh, did we finish the build? Did it succeed? Yes. All right. So <laughs> all right. So um, we're gonna go back to the app. And we're gonna test it out. Does it work? Uh, seems important to know. All right, so I'm just gonna take an existing video and uh, we're gonna go to audio and um, start silence detection. We should see a pop-up here. Or, or not. <laughs> Or <laughs> it's broken. Okay, cool. Something to debug. Uh, why don't I see Docker Desktop? Alright, so everything that I'm expecting to be running is running. So, Task API. Yay, we have a backtrace. We panicked. Failed to parse last updated timestamp. Parse error too short. Okay. Okay, interesting. So this is in task API. So, um, Right. The front end is calling the API, and we made it so that um, okay. So this is an error in well, a couple things. One, it's unfortunate that it causes a panic, and that's that issue that I've not figured out how to solve, uh, where, actually, let's uh, let's let's have some fun and see what, what happens here. If I ask Copilot, uh, how do we solve this problem? So, um, how can this, changed to handle errors without a panic. And it doesn't answer my question, it just changes code, which I don't like. Okay, so interesting. You can do a, does that, does that work? from uh, returns of result of self and then some kind of error. 
let, let's let's see if this actually no yeah can't do that this function has to return a task and you can't say like results something or other you can't do that either right you can only define traits uh, only traits defined in the current crate can be implemented for types defined outside of the current crate. Result is not defined here. Now there's hash map, so that doesn't work. Right, so that that is not that is not a thing. So how do you? How do you do this? I mean, one possibility is that you say, okay, if you can't parse it, you make something up. Um, but that that doesn't really work, especially for like ID or key that depends on ID. That data needs to be there. Anyway, so the the issue at hand, though, um, is it? Hold on, let's let's look at that. I'm 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 making assumptions, but let's actually look at uh, what the backtrace is telling us, right? So, task uh, task worker task as core convert from hash map from. Okay, so that that's from that. From task worker src lib rs failed to parse. Okay, so that is from that code that we were just looking at. That's from our handler. Okay. How did we get there? Oh, right, right, right. So this is, this error is coming, this isn't coming from us trying to queue the task. It's coming from us listing the tasks, right? So in task API, when we list the tasks, this is where we are converting it from a hash map into uh, into records. And that, that, that iter that was in the backtrace was tipping me off that that's what was going on here. So what's happening is that we are enumerating um, tasks and the data isn't compatible, the data in Redis isn't compatible with the changes we've made. Uh, so whoops, should probably uh, fix that. Um, so, Unwrap or, do I want to do something like this? I think what I want to do is I want to, I want to do something like what we're doing here with run after, because there must be some tasks in Redis that um, aren't valid last updated timestamps. So what if I just take this code and I put it here. Uh, you really must, darling. I... So, question. Do I need this expect? Okay, this gets a parse result. What if I change this? That changes the type, right? So now it's an option result. I would need to do like a match here. Right? Okay, so let's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix this code to make it so that it doesn't have an expect and then I'm gonna reuse this up here. And maybe I should extract that into a function and do sorts of things, but that's fine. Let's do this, match, 
Um, so we're gonna get that result. And then based on um, getting a, a result, we're gonna do timestamp with time zone. Uh, and then if we get an error, so if we, if we uh, fail to parse this, then we're going to, I guess we can return an error. That's fine. Um, and then we don't need to unwrap or anymore. Does that work? What am I missing? Oops. Yeah, missing um, curly brace. Okay, it doesn't like that. Expect destruct date time, found enum, option. Yes. Um, confused. Why is this? Like timestamp is daytime. Um, yeah, so the, oh right, right, right. Because with time zone, right, is an option. Uh, bu -bu -bu. So we have to repeat the same exercise of of saying, hey, if. Uh, If, if you're successful, just use it. Otherwise, just use now, I guess, and we'll log an error that we couldn't convert it. Now, what's the problem? It still thinks it's an option of a daytime? Daytime UTC. Daytime UTC. I oh right because yeah so we we just unpack this further right using map maps in the value inside of the option data dot get run after right so what we need to actually do is because run after is. Is not optional. Should it be? I don't think so. Uh, so we're gonna just change this around. Match. This matches all the way down. Um, and then, okay. So if it's none, it's that, and otherwise it's some. And then. Closer. With time zone. Uh, oh, I see. So does that mean this is unnecessary? Oh, yeah, no match there either. Okay. Great. So we try to get run after from the hash map. If it's not there, we'll just use now. If it is there, then we attempt to parse it. If we parse it, then we convert it to the time zone uh, because the parse gives us a fixed offset date time. And then if there's an error parsing it, we just return now. Okay, and so then I can take the same logic and apply that to here for last updated. And of course we have to build again. Maybe it'll be faster this time. In the meantime, uh, back to YouTube upload API, right? So we wanna handle a quota error. Um, so 
we have to look at the response and determine is this a quota error. Okay. I mean, checking for a 403 is a good start, um, but it's not the whole story. Do we do... <laughs> um, let's see, let's go back to the ticket. So this is what the arrow looks like. It's supposed to look like. Uh, so let's, let's get, um, let error body. Uh-huh, uh-huh. What does this do? What does unwrap or default do? Returns the uh, contain OK value or default. Uh, we don't want text, we want JSON. Is that a thing we can do? So that error went away. Uh, so unwrap here is gonna cause a panic. Um, so instead, if we match, yeah, that's fine. It's just the, the same error that we're giving down here. I dislike the repetition, but I'll live with it. Um, so, error body, error errors, zero reason. Error, error, errors, zero reason. Quota exceeded. Hey, look at that. It's like uh, Copilot's been trained with data that's contained this exact code or something. Uh, all right, so too many requests is an interesting status code. What, what, what status code is that? 429, too many requests. Interesting, uh, but that's not what we're returning because that's not what the task service uh, is expecting to know that this is the kind of error it needs to handle. It needs to be um, 503, service and available. That's what I said. Um, and we need to return a header in this as well. How do we return a header with the axum uh, results? Uh -huh. What does into response do? For status code in R, for header map, for extensions, for response parts, all the notifications suddenly. Huh. Okay. Well. At some point, I'm gonna see the kind of conversion for a thing that has a header. I'm gonna see it. Let's 
So many notifications. I could have sworn I had... Oh, I see. Notifications, notifications, notifications. Okay, anyway. Uh, can we can we do this? Keep scrolling, I'm gonna see an example, hopefully, that shows how we are building headers for a response. Something about a header map. So if you have a header map, you can turn it into a response. What if you have something... Oh, status code and something else. Impl kv const and u size into response for... Uh-huh. Response parts and R. Not at all clear. Uh, okay, so. Find if there was a quota error. Uh, Three and include a retry after header. Yes. Now. Nope, nothing. Doesn't know how to do that. What if I what if I do this? Still fails at doing it. Um, I feel like I definitely returned a response that had a header and uh, yeah, uh, location. Maybe in uh, task API. Oops. Control F. Location. Nope. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Here's an example. So where I have headers, but how do I return a non-200 response with headers? Hmm? Can I, can I do this? I have some options for the retry after in terms of its format. So if we go back to task worker, I believe that's where that, that code is implemented. Right, so the retry after can be um, a, a number, which would be the number of seconds, or it can be a timestamp. So 3,600 is uh, 60 times, 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes an hour. So that's one hour. Um, YouTube API quota uh, something something, retry after dot to string and we'll just define this handy constant that should probably maybe eventually be an environment variable const uh, 60 times 
plan. Let's let's do this way. Uh, 24 hours. Time 60 minutes. Time 60 seconds. Brilliant. All right. Um, expected string found str. Cool. still building yeah that's why things are kind of a little laggy uh okay so this should detect if the youtube upload failed because of an api quota issue and then it will tell the task service to retry this after a day uh which is what i want for now hooray Um, I guess while we're waiting for this, this build to happen, uh, I feel bad <laughs> about leaving these to do's even longer. Uh, I'm not going to do this. This is a whole involved thing, uh, involving me figuring out how Axum extractors properly work and then building a thing to do that. Um, and there's not really a strong need really. In fact, I'm just going to remove this. I think there's a few different places where I'm calling get connection. Mostly in task API and a task worker. If there were more, I think there would be more justification of like moving that out, but it, it's fine. Um, so in libdidrs, there are some to do still. Let's, let's see about those. So generate task key, like this is kind of an internal detail. Um, so why, why are we calling it from here? Why are, why are we calling it from here? Well, because we have this thing that, uh, that gets the status for the key and then it gets the last updated and then it gets, uh, generate task data key. And then it gets, so th there's a lot of like Redis stuff here. Um, I wonder if maybe it makes more sense. Do we have a function that gets the task? Not creates it, not cues it, but just gets it. Seems like maybe no. And maybe we should. So like when we, like when we pop task, ah, it says that the detail around getting the task, the getting the task data um, is here. Do we, so we have task key here. I see. So the problem I'm thinking about now is the fact that, okay, I think we're gonna have duplicate code here. We're, we're gonna, we're gonna, it's, it's only a couple of lines anyway, right? But this one, it's the same situation as the other thing where in here we have the task key. In other places, we're just gonna have the ID. Um, but I think that's gonna make sense as a thing to do, right? So if we if we create a new function here called uh, pub fun get task, and yeah, so we wouldn't take the task key though, right? So because the 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 thing that we're trying to solve is in get one handler, we have the ID, not the key. Why is music so quiet? Okay.
So yeah, something like this. Uh, except it's task ID. And then we can get the task key. Um, this should be like a, num uh, a U64 or something. What are we passing around? Back over here is record ID. U64, okay, cool. Then we don't need this extra stuff. There we go. So now we have this new function, get task, but it's gonna get us a, a nice um, task record, right? And so then we don't need this key anymore. Um, we're just going to do this. We're gonna do let task equals get task. reference oops hey the build finished uh, okay and we have record ID is what the task ID is and then what we need to do is we need to match this so we can handle the error okay 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 and then error results in that and uh, oh extra thing all right so that uh, mostly works except now let's read this we do this. Excellent. So that doesn't solve everything that I want to do, you know, in terms of like neatening this up. Because really, like calling generate task data key and getting like calling calling this. Um, let's see, what are we doing with data here? Then we iterate over things. Okay. I think I think what I want to do here then is I want to take this bit of code and I want to move this over into the lib as well. Right? So um, create a new function here called, um, I'll just paste that and I'll do pub fun get task data yeah get task data um, we don't actually want this return like an axum uh, error uh, though uh, let's see we're gonna have it return It, uh, it wants to keep on doing uh, certain, there we go. Okay, so now we're gonna return a result of vec of JSON values or an error string, and that's gonna help us um, get Copilot to do the thing I want. Uh, if something fails, we just unwrap it to an empty list. And then, I mean, we don't, we don't even need, I guess I'll just say data and then close that. Uh, or sorry, okay data. Okay, now we have a get task data function that uh, we should be able to just kind of drop in here. So say uh, let data is match get test data um, should be like task dot ID and then we get the data or there's an error and we surface that as an axum um, 500 error response and then we have to uh, import that and then it actually takes the record ID doesn't need to be like that. Okay. I mean, for that matter, really. Just do that. Okay. So now, if we go back to lib, 
right? All of all of this was in service of hiding these kind of internal functions. Hey, we're not using them here anymore, so we'll remove that. And so now this doesn't need to be public. And this one is probably also not used out of this file. All right, so that that's done as well. So. I mean, it made a lot of sense um, at the time because I think when we implemented Task API and Task Worker, these things, there wasn't a common lib. These were like scattered in different places. And so the migration was to move it all into a lib.rs. And there was still stuff that I hadn't, you know, extracted out. Um, and it's, it's nice to sometimes just have a little bit of time separation to see how, how things will play out. Um, rather than worrying too much about getting it exactly right. Especially for something that is, you know, <laughs> is uh, something that, you know, I'm just using internally. It's not a, a product. It may never be a product, I don't know. It's not really, I'm trying to solve my, <laughs> my use cases uh, on two sides. One is, for dealing with all of these video files. And on the other is to have like a coding project to work on. Um, kind of from a, a meta perspective. But uh, we got a little bit of time. So let's see, are there, how many to-dos are left in this file? Is it just this one? All right, let's do this. So we're gonna have this return a result. Um, we don't actually get any data back, so it's just gonna be a unit uh, value for the okay side, and it's gonna be just a string error if something goes wrong. So this is gonna be real simple. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna say um, match Yep, and then like that. And then you're not happy because I need to tell you that about the type. There you go, All right. Is it? Yeah, important to remember that of course uh, the type parameters here don't necessarily correspond to the values here. It depends on how this function is defined. So ignoring the uh, the lifetime annotation, we have K, V, and R, V. So K is key, V is that third argument for value, and R, V is the, the wrapped result. And so I already knew that the, I'm not getting a result back, so it's just gonna be a unit type for the result value that gets wrapped up here. Um, and so that makes all the types happy. And uh, we have no more to-dos in this file. Are there to-dos in the project? Um, it just occurred to me as I typed that, that <laughs> perhaps I could literally have the text to do in like a, in a key or something. And I think that would also show up. So, uh, think about that in the future. But anyway, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna stop here. I think this is essentially done. Um, no, no, that's not that's not what's happening here at all. Uh, I'm just gonna commit this as this, that's fine. There's probably some bugs and stuff, uh, but I have no tests uh, except what I'm gonna do myself. So uh, that's on me. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so if we go back to, so we have, so this, this, that's the issue. Uh, I guess I didn't open a pull request. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna create a pull request for this. Usually like first commit, I'll create a pull request just to have a place to, to look at it. But uh, there we go. So it'll, it'll auto merge once uh, things build and hopefully they do. But uh, we're gonna wrap things up here. Uh, let's go find someone's raid.